All right, folks, let's get started. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you're joining us from in the world today. And I wanna to welcome you to today's uh, software installation webcast. Just in case you don't know me, my name is Len Thompson and I am Broadcom's mainframe division community manager. And again, I wanna welcome you to today's session. Before I hand you off to Don, I just wanna let you know that we are recording the session, which is why you're all currently muted. If you have questions along the way, please use the questions box along the right side of your screen. I will read those out to Don and she can answer them on the, on the audio. Um, we'll get through as many of those as we can. Excuse me. And depending on how much time we have at the end, I can also let you know how to have your line unmuted if you prefer to ask your questions that way. Uh, like I said, we're recording it, so uh, the, the replay will be out in the communities either later today or tomorrow morning. And the last thing for me is we uh, we really want to make sure that these sessions are valuable for you. So with that in mind, I have a short survey that will pop up at the end of the webcast. I really appreciate you giving us just an extra minute or two of your time to give us some feedback so we can make sure that the next session is even better. And with that out of the way, I wanna hand it off to the team today, so take it away, Don. Thank you, Len. And good morning, good evening to everybody. Um, my name is Dawn Moore, and I'm a architect within the R&D organization. And today, uh, I'm gonna to be talking to you about uh, the acquisition and installation of our Zia products. Um, using VOS map. Okay, so what I'm going to be talking about today is um, acquiring uh, the Broadcom software, uh, talking about the installation using VOS map, uh, acquiring and applying maintenance. And um, I'm just gonna then cover some upcoming, upcoming uh, events that we have on this topic. So I'm gonna start talking um, about our, our, our goal and our direction and uh, what some of the other vendors are doing. Um, so the current status is um, across all all mainframe EOS products, across all vendors, there's there's no standardization exists for managing the products across the platform. Um, we have uh, our mainframe expertise is diminishing as our um, we've got an aging workforce that's retiring, and we've got these uh, younger junior SysProcs that are joining that don't have the expertise that um, the older generation does. Uh, but we've, we've got multiple vendors that have different tools that allow you to install the product. Um, so that's, that's where we're at today. And where we want to go in the future is we're working on a cross-vendor um, platform to, for all products to be acquired, deployed, configured, and maintained in a consistent way. And we're doing that by using a standard tool uh, called ZOSMF, uh, which is delivered as part of IBM Server Pack. Um, but this, this is gonna allow all vendors and IBM um, to provide a consistent way for us, for, for you to install any product whether you're installing BMC, IBM, Broadcom, um, any of the vendors, everybody's gonna be using the OSMF. So we think that's a huge benefit um, going forward that um, these junior SysProcs don't need to learn different tools um, for different vendors. So let's talk about who, who this is aimed towards. Um, the, the software management is really aimed towards the next generation of system programmers. Um, and our persona that we're going after is, we, we call our persona Tyler. And Tyler is a junior systems programmer who's comfortable with more modern tools. He likes GUI, CLI. Um, that, that's what he learned in college. That's what he's comfortable with. Um, but he can install the product and maintain them with, with help from a, an experienced SysProc. Um, and, and that 
experience this prod is comfortable with just using standard SMP EJCL. He's comfortable with the green screen. He's not interested in the modern tools. Um, so US Map, we need to keep in mind, is really geared towards that next generation. So we've talked about, um, in, in this session, we're going to talk about the product installation. And this is actually um, the third presentation on the topic of video SMS. Um, in a prior presentation, we covered configuration, which is going to be automated through the OSMS workflow. Uh, we've also had a presentation on um, uh, maintenance, where uh, we're actually developing a ZOSMS plugin, which is going to allow you to maintain your software um, uh, and apply maintenance. Um, and also, if with in regard to maintenance, we've got um, we've implemented SMPE receive order to easily uh, allow you to schedule jobs to acquire our maintenance. Oops, I went backwards. Okay, so I want to kind of start off with some terminology and explanation on some terminology and describing um, what I'm going to refer to quite a bit um, to a software instance. There's two different types of software instances that I'm going to uh, be referring to and the, the first one is a portable software instance and this is what the vendors are going to be delivering to the customers in a portable software instance is really just uh, a set of archive files that can be deployed um, within ZOSMS so it's in a format that we can ship our product um, you know to our customers and ZOSMS uh, can consume that portable software instance. And within the OSMS, you basically you deploy that, so that portable software instance and you create a software instance. And the software instance is, um, it, it's a deployable unit of software. And within that, within that deployable unit, you're going to have a collection of different types of data sets. Um, you're going to have your SMPE managed data set. Uh, the CSI uh, and target library, CSMPE, CSI and target, and there could also be some non-SMPE uh, data sets. So, um, you know, this is just a, a picture of, you know, here's here's the uh, um, what a portable package, what we're going to package for SysU and what we're going to package for um, Ops 70 s You've got different types of data sets. Um, that basically are part of that software instance. Um, but when you deploy that software instance, you're basically, you end up with a fully installed product that can then be configured. So that's, that's a little bit on terminology. Next, I'm going to uh, talk about acquiring the ZOSMS portable packages. The portable packages um, are going to be available for download from our support portal. Um, we're going to have both the ZOSMS pack files and what we're calling classic pack files, which are the current PAC files that can be installed, um, those are the PAC files that can be installed using our CSM, Mainframe Software Manager, or with SMPE JCL. Uh, so you'll see both PAC files within the portal, but you can only select one or the other. Um, we want to make sure that you know, you're you're actually thinking about, all right, which way am I going to be installing? Make sure you select the right one. So after you've acquired the package um, from the support portal, um, 
this is is what the uh, unpacked file looks like. Uh, it contains uh, your S and P E, your your S and P E CSI uh, contains all of your S and P E uh, target and distribution libraries, and it also contains some other um, JSON files that describe uh, the content of the package um, and some non S and P E data sets. Uh, so this is what the PAC file looks like um, once it's delivered and unpacked. So now I'm going to kind of talk about once you've got the pack, once you've got the software, how you actually acquire that and register that within the OS map. Um, I, this screen or this uh, slide here is the software management dashboard. Um, and the portable software instance is where you're going to um, define your, your portable packages to the OS map. Um, the software instances is where you're going to, after the portable package, the, the portable software instance is defined. That's where you can then manage your software instances. Um, I talked a little bit uh, about, um, you know, workflows, which we're going to kind of um, go through as part of my demo. And um, I also wanted to point out this product tab, uh, which can be used to list all the products that you have installed. Um, it's a consolidated list. And it also contains your GA and EOS date. Um, and I'm going to go through that. So right now, we're just going to start with the portable software instances. And once you select that, uh, you have an option to specify your USS location where the portable software instance is located on your mainframe. Um, and in this case, I've entered my USS directory and all I need to do is hit retrieve and the OS map is going to go and um, retrieve the information and define that software instance into the OS map. It's going to ask you for a name, um, this name, anything you want, you know, you know based on your standards and uh, a description. And optionally, you can add the portable software instance to a, to a category. And a category is a way to group your um, software instances. So maybe you want, if you have um, the security, some security tools, maybe you want to create a category called security. Or maybe you have some of our DevOps tools. Maybe you want a category um, DevOps. Um, so it, it, it's optional, it's not required, but it gives you a way to group um, all your software instances. So once the portable software instance is defined, the next step is to go ahead and install that portable software instance. So I, I've selected um, you know, to deploy that software instance, and when I when when you do that, you're going to see this deployment checklist. Um, and this is it's a guided checklist where you're going to just be guided step by step through the checklist. Um, and you're going to tell the OS map, you know, what you're deploying. Uh, are you deploying a portable package, or a portable software instance, or a software instance? Uh, you're going to tell VOS map where and how you want to install it, um, specify data sets and catalog information, um, and submit the deployment job. So I'm going to kind of step through now this, this checklist. And um, the first one is to specify the properties for this deployment. And within here, now you're, again, um, specifying the properties, which include a name, a description, and um, a category, very similar to what you did with the with the portable um, software instance. Now you're defining a software instance. 
tell us, you know, give us the name and um, in a description. So the next step is tell us what you're going to deploy. Are you deploying a software instance or are you going to deploy a portable software instance? And so on this next um, screen here, it, it asks you, which one are you going to do? And in our example, we're going to deploy a portable software instance. And this is the software instance that I registered in the prior um, when I acquired that portable package. The next step in the checklist is tell us what the objective is. And here's, there's a couple different options. Are you going to create a new CS, global CSI? Are you going to uh, connect to an existing global CSI? Or maybe you're just replacing a software instance um, completely. So in, in this example, what we're, um, in this demo, we're, we're going to actually create a new software instance. So I select it, create um, a new global CSI. Um, and now the next step we're going to go through is um, configure the deployment. And the configuration is where you're going to tell the um if, if you want a distribution library to be created, um, you know, specify your SMPE target zone, data set, catalog. Um, this, is, this is where all the um, data set information is going to be defined. So, this is just an example of, um, you know, where you would define, if you want it, this is our default, typically CAI um, T0 and CAI D0. If you want to change uh, those to whatever your standards are, you can update, um, you know, your, your zone name. Uh, this is uh, a screen where you would actually uh, modify the data set. Um, this shows you all the data sets within that portable software instance, and you can see all of our data sets start with the AI. So what you can do is you can select all the data sets, and then they all be checked. And from the actions, um, you can select modify. And when you do that, it's going to ask you, okay, here's 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 the um, from data set name. What do you want to change that to? And in my example here, I changed um, CAI to QA ESP. And what that's going to do is that's, that's going to change all, you know, my target data set names um, are going to basically be, you know, QA ESP. So it's just really, you specify one high level and all the data sets would be, are going to be updated. So the next thing I want to do is I'm going to generate the JCL to actually install the software. And this is going to take everything we've we already specified and um, um, create JCL to do that. Uh, in this step, this data set is automatically going to be allocated by ZOSMF. You can change this data set if you don't like what ZOSMF um, uh, generated for you. And you're going to enter your job card information. Um, the next step is actually submitting the job. So ZOSMS will generate three jobs, which we see here. Um, the first job is going to unzip your data set, and it's going to extract the data sets from the portable software instance. It's going to um, uh, copy them to temporary data sets um, with unique names. The second job is actually going to then take those temporary names and rename them um, using the high level qualifier that you specified. And um, the third step is actually going to do the updates to your SMP CSI, where it's going to update. Um, all your target zones with your new high-level qualifiers, all your distribution zones, and so on and so forth. So um, that's, that's the jobs that are generated. 
um, to submit the jobs, you're going to select, and they have to be be submitted in order. Um, you can select a job, and then in the actions, um, click down, and you can uh, click submit. And each job, then as as you submit, it will show um, them as completed, and then you can continue to the next job. Uh, you do have to click on the refresh button. Um, this is something we've brought up to IBM that it would be nice if it automatically refreshed. Um, but as you're waiting for the job to complete, you do need to um, click on the refresh. Once the job's complete, you can continue on to the next step of the deployment. And the next step after the job the, the, we submitted the deployment is a step called perform, work, perform workflows. And these workflows are actually um, workflows that are generated by Broadcom. They're not, um, up to this point, this is all, uh, this checklist was gener is generated by ZOSMF. So the perform workflows is actually workflows that we've provided. Um, most of our product workflows will contain a post SMPE um, workflow, and um, it may also contain. Our, our, we're working on this right now. It will contain a base installation workflow um, and an upgrade workflow. And if if those if there is a base or an upgrade, those would display within this list. And in my example here. Um, for this product, it's only, it only has a post SMP workflow. Like I said, you're going to see other workflows um, that can be executed in this list. So, I when I click on the um, the post SMP workflow, it shows you just again just a, a list of tasks that need to be um, completed in order to complete this workflow. Um, so in this step, I, I've already completed uh, the first step of the workflow, um, and what I would do is click on the ready, or um, click on this one, go to actions, and you know perform this workflow. You can also just click on the title, and that will start the next step. Um, and the OSMF keeps track of how far along you've complete, you know, gotten with the workflow. Um, and as you're going through each step, you know, they'll be marked completed and it will show you what's not completed yet. But within our, our within our post SMP workflow, um, if a product has any external data sets, um, for example, DB2 load or CICS, maybe it uses MQ, um, it's going to prompt you to enter your data set. Um, you know, for these specific external libraries. And then we're going to use execute SMPE linked L mods, which will relink any load modules um, that use any of these external data sets. Um, there will be an optional step to mount your USS directory if the Broadcom product has a USS directory defined to it. In this example, there's I, it, it, it's not going to mount a directory because this product um, does not have one. So once all the steps are completed within the workflow, you're ready to continue to the next step. And the last step within the deployment checklist is to specify the properties. And again, you're just simply entering, um, you know, the the software instance name and description. Once you've done that, the checklist is all checked off and the installation is complete. So every every product is gonna you're gonna go through the same checklist. Um, the one thing I want to know is anywhere in this checklist, if you need to get if you get distracted and you need to come back with, to it, you'll know exactly where you left off in the process. And you can just restart. 
the other thing I wanted to um, show you is that uh, this product, um, the, the view the uh, consolidated list um, of each product in your software instance, um, this is going to display the product um, from your dashboard. And let me actually go to the next. There we go. And this is just an example of, um, again, this is, this is not real data, so don't, these GA data aren't, aren't real. Um, I kind of made them up in my test environment. But these are going to show you all the components that you have installed. It's going to show you the GA date and whether or not we've announced EOS and the service. So this is, um, we're going to be providing a file that could be imported into the OSMS. Um, so that you can get up-to-date information, and this allows you to filter, so you can bring, okay, let me see if there's anything new that's EOS that I may need to add to my list um, to upgrade. Um, so that, that's something, uh, you know, convenient within EOSMS that you can find this information. So, We've talked about acquiring the, the actual software and installing. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about is acquiring and applying maintenance. Our best practice is to use SMP e receive order. Um, and, I, and I do know that most of the major vendors also support receive order. Um, so we're all striving towards that common um, way to acquire maintenance. And SMP e receive order, what it's going to do is it's going to build a custom package of missing PTFs and download those PTFs to an SMP NTS directory and receive them into your global phone. Um, the package is also going to include our plus plus error hold data and any plus plus assigned statements. Um, the assigned statements would include, if you're installing our CARS, our recommended service, it would include um, those statements. Uh, our order server supports um, the ordering of specific PTFs, uh, APARS, um, critical, which is going to send hyper and um, uh, any PTFs resolving um, PEs, PTF and error, a recommended service, which is our CA recommended service, um, and all is going to give you everything that you're missing. Or you could just place an order for whole data. Uh, we recommend that you use the job scheduler to automate the um, acquisition on a regular cadence. Uh, our delivery turnaround time, I think, averages 10 minutes uh, for an order. And there's one time uh, security and network setup. Uh, you need to download a, a Broadcom specific certificate, and there's a couple other certificates required. You create a key ring, um, and you also need to update your uh, network uh, DNS so that you can access our Broadcom servers. If you're a CSM customer using our um, Core Software Manager, we still recommend that you set up receive order. You will see that the download is much faster than using the download feature within CSM. Um, so we are recommending it to all customers. Okay, um, as far as applying maintenance, uh, we are implementing, there's going to be a new ZOSMF software update action, which is planned for August 2020. And the use cases for software update is it's going to provide the ability to apply corrective service. Um, if, you know, you have a, this was just, uh, fix a specific problem you're having. Um, you can apply preventive maintenance, which is our CA recommended service. 
or you can use it to apply PPS required for installation of um, new software, uh, hardware, or functions. So those are the use cases that um, the software update is going to uh, support. And basically, this is, you know, um, you can still use, uh, you know, JCL that you have been using for, for recommending the software update that's coming in August. So, you know, today I showed you our new installation strategy and and um, some of the things that we've got uh, coming. Uh, you know, talked about the acquisition of the portable software instance, the installation using the OSMF, um, the acquisition of maintenance using receive order, which is available today and is definitely recommended. Um, I talked about the use of the OSMF software update to apply maintenance, which is coming. Um, it, it actually will be delivered by IBM as part of um, the server pack. So uh, it's going to be uh, delivered as a PTS by IBM. And uh, I've also talked about the use of the OSMF workflows to automate the configuration. So hopefully I've given you an overview of, of you know our strategy and where we're going um, in the future. I just have some links here covering the uh, past presentations that we've had. Um, you know the on on software uh, on our ZOSMF strategy, um, and I would suggest if you missed those, um, you may want to go back and take a look at those. I also want to mention that we do have some mainframe technical exchanges that are scheduled. Um, we've got some, you know, new dates out there for ones we had to cancel. Uh, but you, you know, keep this in the back of your mind as the dates are approaching. Um, but we'd like to, you know, see customers at our um, mainframe technical exchanges. So I, that is all I have, um, and Len, I think I want to turn it over to you now to see if there's any questions. All right. Thanks, Don. There are several questions. Uh, first, can we get a copy of the presentation? Yes. Uh, Don, if you could send me your presentation, I'll make sure it gets posted in the community. So, that, so that's an easy oh. one. Yep. Uh, let me see if I can sort through these and try to ask them in some kind of order. Probably not. Uh, question for the end of the presentation. Will IBM be offering training on these features in ZOSMF? Will the documentation come through IBM? Should we we'll be watching IBM support sites for information on these facilities? We will be providing documentation on how to um, install our products using ZOSMF. Uh, we are not duplicating what IBM um, is also going to be documenting, but we're, we're uh, so you're not going to have to go to the IBM documentation. Um, but also, as our products are available within the OSMF, we will be communicating that to the customers. Thanks, Donna. Um, is there a current list of CA products that are ZOSMF compatible? At this point, we are in a validation phase. Uh, we're, we're validating the portable software instances, and we are also doing validation on workflows. Um, we're hoping to be delivering some products in the near future, uh, but if you're interested in joining our validation, if you have specific products that you'd like to um, you know, take a look at, you can contact myself and I'll get you, um, you know, the, the, we can work through um, the product management um, to get you signed up. Thanks, Don. 
Uh, next one, the outputs from various installation steps, are they available online through ZMF, ZOSMF or do you have to log on to your LPAR to see the output of each job? Good question, good question. The output, you can get to the output from ZOSMF. Um, it, does, it does have an option, which I did not show, where you can actually view the output um, right from the OSMF. All right, next one. It was unclear in the beginning about the packages for ZOSMF. Do we have to download from CA and place into the into a USS directory for ZOSMF to import, or can ZOSMF ZOSMF actually retrieve from CA support? Yes, that's that's a very good question. Um, right now, the only capability we're going to have in place when we initially roll this out is to download the package from the portal and upload to and un, upload to a USS directory. Um, we do have future plans, um, and I, I can't make any commitment to use receipt from network, um, where this is similar to IBM and what other vendors are doing. Um, which will allow you to directly um, receive the package from a, uh, one of our uh, secure FTPs directly into the OSMF. But our initial rollout, we're only going to be supporting the download um, from the portal, you know, FTP to uh, the mainframe. Thanks, Don. Uh, next one, when will ZOSMF be mandatory and classic deployment no longer available? Um, I, I think I want to uh, ask Jan Solar to answer that one. Jan, I, I'm not sure if we have a, a, a date on that. Jan, you're on mute, by the way. If you're trying to respond. Uh, hi, this is Jan. Uh, not sure if I get uh, the whole question. Can you repeat that, please, Len? Oh, let me take a look. Hold on. I already moved it along. Hold on. The, the, the question is, is um, when will ZOSMF when be mandatory and classic deployment no longer be available? So, so basically, the question is, is when is uh, a core software manager no longer going to be available? And I, I am aware that we have not announced end of support, um, but we are not going to announce that until we have, we, we are comfortable and we have a replacement. Yes, that's exactly true. Uh, first, we need to finish and deliver all uh, features from is now uh, in development and then over to IBM regarding uh, software maintenance. Uh, and then there will be some uh, some period of time for for testing and, and uh, some, some bug fixing if there will be any issues. And uh, the plan is that uh, this, uh, this window should finish somewhere in the middle of next year. And uh, that will be the date when we will announce the uh, sunset of the MSM. And then there will be, uh, and I'm not sure, I believe one year of uh, time to help people accommodate to that situation. And after that, uh, the USMF will be mandatory. Thanks, John. Uh, next question. The areas where freeform text is required for updating, specifically the JCL job card, is this controlled by the Broadcom interface or is it part of the IBM ZOSMF standard? That is part of the Z, that's part of ZOSMF itself. It's not controlled by Broadcom. Thank you. Uh, next one. Is there a process or procedure to migrate from Mainframe Software Manager to Zio SMF. We will be providing some automation to um, import all of your SMP CSI from uh, CSM into Zio SMF. Yeah. Thank you. 
Next question, uh, how is the installation of a software instance different from that of a portable software instance? Um, I'm assuming, so at, at the point where you specify, you, you can um, take a software instance and you can deploy that to another LPAR, let's say. Or um, maybe you want to clone a software instance, you just applied maintenance to it, and you want to now create a clone. So a portable software instance, if you installed, you know, you, you acquired that a month ago, but then you applied maintenance to your software instance, maybe you don't want to deploy the portable pack. You want to deploy a software instance. So so the difference is, is, is it, it could have maintenance. Your software instance is going to have maintenance on it, whereas your portable software instance Maybe, maybe a little, you know, older. So I, I, I hope that answers that question. Thanks, Don. Uh, next one. Let's see. What's the major advantage of ZOSMF compared to an already installed and running MSM? Why, why are we changing a winning team? Well. I, I think the, the the biggest thing we're trying to do is we're trying to get to one way to install all the OS products. And the only way we can do that is um, to use a common tool across the platform. So I, I think, yes, we, we agree. DSM, you know, we, we've got a lot of customers that, you know, are using that, but we believe the benefit really is um, going forward having one tool. And also, we see a major benefit with um, providing a consistent way to configure our products, um, which, you know, MSM, what, what we did is, is we're taking, we, we are actually working with IBM to develop the maintenance, the software update plugin. So we are taking um, some of the, the, the actual automation that's in MSM, and that's going to be imported. You're going to see that within the software update option that's, that's going to be um, delivered sometime, you know, late in the summer. Thanks, Don. Uh, the next one, if the ZOSMF installation is chosen at the acquire phase, is there an option to go back and get the classic installation if there's a problem with the ZOSMF version's installation? The answer is yes. It's just at, at the time you're ordering, um, yeah, it, it, it's one or the other. Okay. So. Uh, let's Looks like this is the last one. Can a non-ZOSMF CSI be imported up to be managed by ZOSMF, such as what Chorus Software Manager can do? Um, you, you're, I'm sorry, Lent. That was a, yeah. a non-SMPE or? Yeah, let, let me read it again. Uh, can a non-ZOSMF CSI be imported up to be managed by ZOSMF, such as what CSM can do? It, yes, there is automation, it, you know, there's, within ZOSMF, you can import any CSI. Um, so if you're not a CSM user, you can absolutely import all your CSIs and then take advantage of, um, you know, using the software update you can also take advantage of using our workflows. Um, so, yes, it doesn't have to be a CSM CSI. Thanks, Don. Maybe yeah, I have. Oh, go ahead, Jan. Yeah, Sorry. I, I just want to add that uh, we were de developing very simple REC script, which, uh, if you are the MSM customer, you can easily uh, move or transfer your MSM CSIs. Uh, instances or software instances uh, to the ZOSMF. So uh, there is a script with few parameters and uh, uh, it's done uh, automatically without any uh, manual step-by-step -step actions. Thanks, John. 
All right, folks, uh, I don't see any other questions in the questions box, but we'll give you another minute to ask any that you might have. And I'll also take this a moment to remind you that we do have a survey that's gonna pop up here at the end. We would love to get, to get some feedback from you. And if you have any questions that, that come to mind after we close, you can also ask your question. There's a field right in that survey as well. All right, I don't see anything coming in, so I think we can go ahead and wrap. Don, thank you very much as always. Um, and, uh, and Jan, thank you for, for jumping in as well. And uh, to, for, for everyone else, thank you very much for giving us almost an hour of your time today. We really appreciate it. Hope everyone is safe and healthy and stay that way. So have a great day, everybody.